Just ahead on American Black Journal, as this year's historic presidential election nears, we're going to talk about getting out the vote and what's at stake for African Americans. Plus, details on a local organization that brings out the hidden talents of special needs children and adults. Stay right there. American Black Journal starts now. American Black Journal is funded by the W.K. Kellogg Foundation, a partner with communities where children come first. How does diversity bring energy to us all? At DTE Energy, we believe that it's the contributions of all that build great communities. As a company, we grow stronger by welcoming the unique perspectives of everyone. As community members, we support our state's broad culture and heritage. From working closely with women and minority-owned suppliers to embracing our local cultures, DTE Energy is powering diversity. The DTE Energy Foundation is a proud sponsor of Detroit Public Television. Welcome to American Black Journal. I'm Stephen Henderson. On Tuesday, America is going to elect its next president. The successor to President Barack Obama will take over during a time when Black Lives Matter has become a widespread movement in this country. There's a lot at stake in this election for African Americans, and it's imperative that you make your voice heard. Your, vo your vote does count. Joining me now to talk about the importance of taking your souls to the polls is the president of the Detroit branch of the NAACP, Reverend Wendell Anthony. As always, thanks for being here. Thanks, Steve. Good to be with you. Uh, you know, whenever I, I hear that phrase, take your souls to the polls, that's a phrase that I came up with. I was going to say, that's your phrase, not mine. And, and my only regret, Stephen, is that I did not copyright and market that because so I would have using to pay that you. all over the time. Matter of fact, you would have had to pay that's me right. just to say what you said. That's but right. Take your souls to the polls. It's time to do that right that's now. That's right. Absolutely. So turnout is what I think this election is yes. going to is going to turn on. Uh, I don't. I, you know, we were talking about this before. Yes. I don't think there are more people who support Donald Trump than support Hillary Clinton, but I'm worried that more people who support Donald Trump right. will show up. I, I'm concerned about that, too, um, Stephen. We have to get out the vote and vote like we 25 points behind. As a matter of fact, uh, people are talking about enthusiasm. They're talking about the millennials, whether or not they're going to come out and vote. They're talking about um, Obama and Michelle. They're gone. Obama's not on the, on the ballot. Uh, there are two people on the ballot at the top. One is named Donald Trump. The other is named Hillary Clinton. There's a big difference. And those are big differences. <laughs> and I would simply say to people who are wrestling with what they're going to do, close your eyes and take the names off the table. One candidate supports the Voting Rights Act. One does not. One candidate wants to raise income equality. Another says you're already making too much money. One candidate has negated and humiliated every group in this country. One candidate is trying to unite folk in the country. One candidate has no government experience. Another candidate has served in any capacity of government you may think of and has the most experience of any person ever running for president. One candidate fought for racial discrimination in housing. Right. One right. candidate fought against it. Now, if you were to ask me on the basis of that, who should be president, isn't it this obvious, Stephen? Be a question. I mean, I know you can't just come out like that. And number, <laughs> we don't endorse. But I'm simply, if, if y'all call me after the program, I'll be glad to tell you. I'm simply saying that the choice is very clear. So we're yeah. concerned about that. We're concerned about when we hear people say, we want you to go to the polls and make sure uh, things are going right. Stephen, you have as much chance to have voter fraud uh, as you do about being struck by lightning. Sure. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. And the interesting thing, the most recent case about voting fraud was committed by a Trump supporter right. in, in Iowa, Iowa right. who actually <laughs> voted twice, saying I had to vote twice because I know it was a rigged election. I didn't want Hillary to steal my <laughs> vote. Now she got to pay a $5,000 fine 
and she's messed up his whole program. So it's not us, it's yeah. the other folk. Yeah, yeah. Uh, talk about the things that are at stake for African Americans in this election, the kind of things that we would see locally. I talked about the Black Lives Matter movement and yes. the open, uh, but there are a lot of things in Detroit that matter. Here no too. question. First of all, uh, police and community relations are on the ballot. We have one of the, the best relations with our police department and law enforcement in the country. That's why the uh, AG came here several weeks ago to meet with us in Detroit. We have a model. We're a part of that. We meet regularly with those folks. The fact that, Stephen, for all of us, the Supreme Court is on the sure, ballot. Yeah. That is going to dictate for the next 30 to 40 years how you and I live in America. Yeah. And so they're already talking about they will not, if in fact uh, Hillary wins, they will not even, in fact, do their job yeah. as yeah. government officials. That should frighten us. Those millennials who are concerned about college tuition going down so they can go to school, that's on the line. And we have a plan that is in the platform that suggests how we're going to do that. Matter of fact, those people who are burning burners and been got burned by the burn, mm. His platform has been included in the Democratic Into, platform yeah. by virtue of what he and Hillary have agreed upon. So if you're talking about housing, if you're talking about uh, mortgages, if you're talking about an urban agenda where college tuition is going to be decreased, if you're talking about small business development, and we've got a lot of that in Detroit, where there's a program where you can get a loan and you will be able to get that for three years by doing some community benefits, and that's in a part of a platform, that's in the platform of one of the candidates. And I'm simply saying everything is at stake. Yeah. When one of my, I have two daughters, three daughters, and one of my daughters, the two that are eligible to vote, one was a burning supporter, die hard, revolutionary. <laughs> I don't know where she get that from. <laughs> and the sorry. other was a Hillary <laughs> supporter. But when it was concluded that he was no longer on the ballot, well, Daddy, I'm listening now. I guess I got to go. Now she's working for the other campaign, yeah. Hillary. I'm simply, I'm just saying what it is. I'm simply saying for those who are unsure, it is too much at stake. For you and I, we could go with the fact that uh, our folk died for us to be able to have the right to vote, vote. To go vote, that's right. But Stephen. That's not working for them. Yeah. But why is that not working? That's not, what, because, what happened? Because they have too much, too soon, too quick. Yeah. Well, that's they have benefited from the struggle. And we as grown folk have not reinforced the necessity to remember how you got over into their lives. They want it quick. We try to make life so much better for our children, and we do, and we should. I ain't mad at that. But we have not reinforced in our homes, in our churches, in our organizations, the historic nature of how we got here. This did not fall on us like manna from heaven. <laughs> Somebody had to bleed and to die sure. for that. But and, and what they want is they want to be at the top. They want stuff quick <laughs> and they want it now. And I was with my mentor, the late Reverend James E. Wallace Reverend uh -huh. Jr. You knew him yeah. for 28 years and I carried <laughs> buckets of water for him, and I enjoyed every bucket full <laughs> that I carried. So when people look at Fellowship Chapel, when they look at that church over there, when they look at them, wow, how did you get that? Because I worked. I waited for I, 28 I, and years. And I waited my turn, <laughs> yeah. and I was then put in place. So I'm simply saying, I don't expect people to do what I did, but I do expect folk to look at history, to look at what is at stake, to look at what they want for their children. Yeah. This is personal. This election is personal. It's really for the very soul of America. Of America. It's defining Which what the country way means. is this nation going to go? Is it going to go the way of division yeah. and derision and humiliation, or is it going to go by virtue of the way of coming together and unity and cooperation and lifting everybody up for the American opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there, we have some local things on the ballot yes. as well. Very important for people to turn out for no that. Question. The um, transit millage. The transit millage. Everything. Uh, the CBA debate. The CBA debate and uh, school the board. The school board. Yeah. Uh, and I'll just be very frank with you, Steve, since you raised it. I didn't raise You raised it. <laughs> I'm going to be very frank with you. As one who worked with the Coalition for the Future of Detroit School right. Children, yeah. a two-year time tier, which I did not want to do all of that. <laughs> All the work we put in, all the articles that you wrote about yeah. this, all the changes, and you saw uh, the mischief that was done yeah, in Lansing. Absolutely. But one of the things that must not happen 
We cannot afford, after all this work, to keep things the same and to go back to the same board that we have. Yeah. I'm saying that on your program. All right. We You're need a new board of education. And there are several people who are running that are well qualified to fit, for, to fit that bill. It would be a travesty of justice for us to go right back to the same board. Not that they did all of this, because they did not. They didn't. However, we need a new opportunity here. And I'm simply suggesting that there are 63 people that may be on the ballot. You can only vote for seven. You need to do some studying, call some folk, call the NAACP, call Fannie Lou Hamer, uh, call Stephen Henderson. <laughs> there are some people that we can recommend yeah. or some thoughts around that so we don't get jammed again. And the Wayne University uh, Board of Governors. Uh, right, uh, the Board of Governors. I, I w have said for a couple months now that I'm impressed by the people among that 63. Well, I'm it's there. a good group of people. Good, Angelique Peterson made a lot of uh, really Ryan good. Uh, Mack. Uh, yeah. uh, I mean, you got some uh, Leslie uh, Andrews. You got um, a, a bunch of folk. Misha Stallworth. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, Deborah Hunter Harville, Iris Taylor. Uh, you have um, some folk are talking about Sonia Mays. I'm simply yeah. saying there are some good people that are running. Yeah. Everybody can't win, but we can make sure that we vote the whole ballot. It's, I know it's a, a long ballot. It's three pages, yeah. but you got to stay in line. you got to go vote. And then on Monday, you can go and vote absentee. Right. You don't right. have to stand in line. You can take your time. You can go down to the city clerk's office. You can call the NAACP, 313-871-2087. We can help you with that. There's transportation needed. If there's information for seniors that they need information on how yeah. to negotiate, out, there are people who are standing by. If you want to volunteer, if you want to get it out, we got to come and take our souls. There to the are post. no excuses. No. On Tuesday. If you if you eating, you got to be voting. <laughs> if you ain't voting, you should not be eating. I tell my people that all the time. If you got somebody living in your house and you feeding him or her, <laughs> then they best be out there voting. Get out and uh, vote. Get out and vote. That's how they keep the food coming on the plate. Right. I'm simply <laughs> saying that, Stephen, I've never seen an, an election like this. Yeah. I don't um, think anybody has. It should not, it really, between you and me, it should <laughs> not be this close. No, it should It should it not shouldn't. even be an issue. One person is like that. <laughs> the other person is like <laughs> that. Yeah, I said one person is like that. <laughs> the other person is like that. Look at the record. Don't go with where you're going to take me now and tomorrow. Look at where were you at yesterday. What did you do? What did and you how do did you get where you are? Yeah. And, and, and don't let the, the email <laughs> issue uh, throw you off. Can you, um, Stephen, let me ask you. I'm sorry. I get excited about this stuff. But let me ask you. All this stuff about somebody's emails. Can you imagine Stephen yeah. Henderson? <laughs> right. If Going they busted the emails, the emails <laughs> on <laughs> Donald Trump, right, right, what you would hear from the governors, right. from the senators, from the people that ran against him, right. what they'd be saying about this cat. Right. If if his emails were exposed by the Russians, <laughs> like the Russians are exposing Hillary. Hillary's yeah. emails, yeah. and we're supposed to not be friends with the Russians. <laughs> But he's inviting the Russians to come and get in our business, yeah. and him and Vladimir Putin seem to have a thing. <laughs> I'm simply saying, what more do you need? Take yeah. your souls to the polls yeah. and vote like your life depended upon it, because quite frankly, it does. All right. Uh, Reverend w Wendell Anthony, you say it all the, way, all the time. You say it better than I can. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. Get yourself out and vote. Man. All right. Thanks for uh, being here. Coming up next, an American Black Journal, an organization that makes therapy fun for children and adults with special needs. But first, here's a look at some important moments in Detroit's black history. I'm Ken Coleman with a look back at African-American life in Detroit. This week in 1966, Reach Out, I'll Be There by the Four Tops was the nation's top R&B song. I'll be there. In 1963, Malcolm X delivered his message to the grassroots speech at King Solomon Baptist Church. And in 1994, the Reverend Wendell Anthony won re-election as Detroit branch NAACP president. These are significant events this week in Detroit's black history, taken from the book On This Day, African-American Life in Detroit. 
My next guests are part of a nonprofit organization that helps hundreds of children and adults with special needs. FAR Thera Therapeutic Arts and Recreation uses music, dance, and leisure activities to empower and educate their clients. The group's 16th annual fundraising event takes place later this month. It's a special evening that showcases the talents and skills of FAR's clients. Here's a look at some past performances. Joining me now is the president of FAR, Pamela Ayers, along with dance therapist and counselor, Candace Moss. Welcome to American Black Journal. Well, thank Hi. you for having us thank here. Absolutely. I, I have to say, I didn't know about FAR uh, before I saw this on the schedule for the show. That what, a, what a great idea and what a fabulous way to sort of tap into that hidden human potential mm -hmm. that, that, uh, that we all have. Well, the unique thing about FAR is we're 65 years old, and unless you have somebody in your life with a special need, you may you not have heard of know, us. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we're trying to change that. We've really expanded in the last couple of years, and we've rebranded our organization so we can get out into the community and service more people with special needs. So it's a very exciting time for us. And talk about some of the things that you do. And we saw the performances mm -hmm. there uh, at, at your fundraisers, but talk about some of the things that you do all year to sort of. Uh, service this this community. Well, for, like I said, is a 65 years old, 65 year old organization. Mm -hmm. We service 1,200 people a year with special needs. We're pretty unique in the fact that we work with any age and any diagnosis. So we have. 18 month old babies that we're working with right now and a woman who Candace actually mm -hmm. sees for dance therapy um, who's in her 80s uh -huh. with um, dementia. Wow. So we really work with a wide range. We do private therapy in music, art, recreation and dance and we're very excited. We just had Candace come on board and she's our first certified dance movement therapist. So wow. it's pretty exciting. We do private therapy and group therapy as well. We really try to focus on any need that somebody in the special needs community has. Yeah, and the way mm -hmm. you define that community, that special mm -hmm. needs community, is really broad. I mean, mm -hmm. as you point out, I mean, it's not just uh, uh, it's not just one type of uh, disability that somebody might have. It's it's a really wide range. Absolutely, and that will, is another reason why we're kind of unique in the fact that we work with. Um, fam families and friends that are on the autism spectrum, mm -hmm. uh, Down syndrome, Fragile X, any age and any diagnosis. Yeah, yeah. Candace, uh, you're working to use dance, which I love, the mm -hmm. idea of the arts, Absolutely. sort of as a way to, to, to provide therapy for these, uh, for these clients. Absolutely, yes. Dance movement therapy is uh, somewhat it seems pretty new to the state of Michigan. Um, I'm just excited to be a part of FAR, uh -huh. and I'm just excited to share what dance movement therapy is, and that being um, it's a, a form of psychotherapy where we use the modality of dance or movement uh, to access or to further integrate an individual's, uh, their cognitive functioning, behavioral, emotional, and even physical, mm -hmm. um, because we are moving. So it just helps them, their level of functioning on a daily basis, just uh, continue to get further and, and, and increase and improve. So yeah. that's what we're uh, uh, I would imagine that this is something, again, that, that uh, would be useful to a really wide range of, Absolutely. of people at FAR. In other words, uh, people with cognitive disabilities mm -hmm. uh, might benefit, but so might somebody who's uh, been in, a, in an accident or, Absolutely. or something like that. Yeah, it, and it doesn't necessarily have to be an impairment. It can, we can um, eventually move into uh, special needs with um, marriage. Um, so couples, a lot of movement. So a lot of that is an intimate, the, in, the importance and just the body, the use of the body and how far and it expand, how wide and of a range you can go with the use of your body. So yeah. I'm just excited to be able to bring that to to FAR and to the surrounding areas of city of Detroit. And yeah, I'm just yeah. excited to yeah. be a, a, here and That's doing really that. That's really great. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I would imagine that one of the things that you deal with with, uh, with these clients is the idea of isolation. I would think that, that uh, 
uh, the fear would be that they live isolated lives and, and it's div more difficult for them to, to sort of uh, get a chance to interact with other folks. Oh, absolutely, and that's why we've created some of our programs around that, that get our, fam our, our kids out into the community or our clients out into the community. We have a social connections group mm -hmm. that every Tuesday they get in our far van and they go out into the community. They've gone to Tigers games, but they've also gone grocery shopping. Wow. So they've got to meet people from the military. So it's just been a really great opportunity. And to be honest, I think it really benefits the community, uh -huh. our typical community, even more than our far friends that are out in the community because right. it gives people a chance to see what they have to offer and it's a really quite a great group of people. Yeah. Especially. So uh, this year's fundraiser is coming up. Yes it is. Uh, you want to talk about some of the things that we might expect to see there? I would love to <laughs> and I, I thank you for sharing a little bit of last year. Yeah right. We performance. Saw some of so last year. year our theme was the British Invasion so uh -huh. you heard a lot of music from the Beatles <laughs> yeah. and everything. This year we're doing the American Songbook. So oh, any cool. Sinatra fans out there or Mancini, Gershwin, <laughs> We've got just some amazing music. Um, it incorporates music, art, and dance therapy. Mm -hmm. And it's a pretty special event because it gives our clients a chance to perform on stage and ha have the opportunity that a lot of typical kids have, right. which is performing out in the public. And they just do an amazing job. Yeah. It's really a special evening. We'll have over 600 people there. So the Seligman Performing Arts Center at Country Day hosts us every year and opens their beautiful auditorium to us. So it's a wonderful experience for everybody. I was going to say, I would bet for the kids mm -hmm. who participate or, or the kids or adults who participate, that's mm -hmm. like a life-changing oh, yeah. event, right? Mm -hmm. You're getting on stage and mm -hmm. sort of doing your thing, right? You have to bring Kleenex yeah. because <laughs> I'm telling you, it's, it's wonderful. But one of the um, performances in the show, Candace works with families. So she has dads dancing with their daughters with special oh, needs, moms dancing nice. with their sons, oh, wow. and it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah. And they work so hard for the last six say, weeks. How long does it take to prepare uh, for this event every year? Well, our therapists work with the clients, um, sometimes in their individual sessions, but then every Saturday for about six weeks prior to the event, we have big rehearsals. and. They work very, very hard. It's a huge commitment because some of the some of our youth that are performing and our adults that are performing, um, they're giving up their whole, you know, a good portion of their Saturday sure, right. to um, <laughs> rehearse and everything. But it's, yeah. it's so Candace, are the dads and daughters and moms and oh, uh, sons ready? They are doing awesome. I can't <laughs> wait to see for everyone to see how hard they've been working. Yes, yeah. extra time and the extra effort. Um, I was just encouraging a client the other day, just moving through the space and seeing her dad right at the bottom, me encouraging her, her, encouraging her and pushing her and seeing him right at the bottom of the steps to encourage her as well was, it was just breathtaking to see the encouragement and the support that these, um, these young children have around yeah. them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what kind of things does, uh, does this community still need that maybe it's not getting, even from a group like FAR? I mean, I always sort of wonder, are we doing enough uh, with government and, and nonprofit and philanthropy and things like that for, for communities like these? Well, that's a really good point to bring up because one thing is um, what our therapists are able to accomplish with our clients mm -hmm. is amazing, but it is not government funded. Um, right. So right. the creative arts therapy is not supported by um, by the government or insurances. So it's really important to get out there and start advocating for our special needs community yeah. so we can get these services looked on as, in, as, as important as PT and OT and speech therapy, which are all very, very important. Right. But so this is a so separate is creative from, arts therapy. Right. Yeah. I mean, this is not treated the same way as those things would be, which are, which are pretty standard with people's insurances if you're in the hospital or uh, under under some certain kinds of care, you get those things. Absolutely. Yeah. And then FAR needs to grow. Um, we are pretty much at capacity in Oakland and Macomb County. We have two different locations. Our headquarters is out of the First Presbyterian Church in Birmingham. Okay. They've gifted us space for over 30 years, so we don't have the overhead of rent and electricity bills and maintenance, so we're very lucky. We also have a um, church out in Macomb County that gifts us space as well, so it's time for us to move into Wayne County 
County and expand into Macomb County a little bit more yeah. because with all the transportation issues in this state, Absolutely. people can't get to us, so we're going to have to go to them. Yeah. We also provide therapy in nine different public school systems, so it's a really great way to expand our reach because sometimes kids in the public school system, they're not getting art or music or gym because right. of their ability, mm -hmm. so we are able to provide that by providing our art therapist and our recreational therapist out into the yeah. public schools. And what you need to do those things is money. And we support, need money, right? yeah. yeah, and that's why our Far Friends event is so important. 100% of the money that we raise from that event, it's underwritten by the Volbrick Foundation, so anything that we make off of that event goes directly to our goes scholarship to fund. Oh, very good. And uh, because over a third of our clients are on scholarship yeah. to um, get our services. Okay. So that's a very important day for us. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, congratulations on all the great work thank and you. on the upcoming fundraiser. Thank you. And thanks for being here. Thank you. Oh, thank you for having us. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, that's our program for today. Thanks for watching. You can get more information about our guests at AmericanBlackJournal.org, and you can always connect with us on Facebook and on Twitter. We'll see you next time, and make sure you vote on Tuesday. Journal is funded by the W.K. Kellogg Foundation, a partner with communities where children come first. How does diversity bring energy to us all? At DTE Energy, we believe that it's the contributions of all that build great communities. As a company, we grow stronger by welcoming the unique perspectives of everyone. As community members, we support our state's broad culture and heritage. From working closely with women and minority-owned suppliers to embracing our local cultures, DTE Energy is powering diversity. The DTE Energy Foundation is a proud sponsor of Detroit Public Television.